A friend asked me to build out this 2013 Toyota Sienna minivan in order for her to live in it, but she wanted everything to be removable in case she had to sell it at the end of her time living in it. I was surprised by the size of these minivans, but we did need to take out this seat in order to add storage, and this one we're going to leave in in case the owner of the van ever needs to have more than two people in the car. Moving forward through the van, you see these trolleys here. Now, they're really difficult to remove without doing much damage to the van, so we're going to leave them in and build a flat floor over the top of them, which will encase them and clean up the finished product. And that's my dog, Belle. You'll see her again. In order to build the floor around the trolleys, I traced out the shape of those trolleys onto a piece of foam and then cut it out. I needed to use two layers of foam. The trolleys are two inches high at the highest point, and this is one inch foam. So I did end up using two pieces. I did a quick test fit for the lower level, and then I did the exact same thing with the upper one. The upper one, however, did have a couple high spots. So you'll see me here routing out all those high spots so the floor sits nice and flat. I hate working with foam because it just gets absolutely everywhere. So I had to do that inside the shop, but I tried to do everything else with wood outside. After I got the foam all squared away, I put that top layer together on a piece of plywood I had laying upside down and traced out the final shape of the floor. The plywood is going to sit on top of both layers of foam as kind of the top cap, and that's going to be the floor you end up seeing. I cut out the final shape that I had traced on the plywood, cut the corners off, and then brought it over to the van to see if everything would fit right. It's at this stage of the process that I learned that I do everything with a pretty stupid look on my face. So you're just going to have to bear with me on that. After a little bit of wiggling, I did end up getting that top piece of the floor in through the door, set it down, and seemed like it worked out just about perfect. I moved on to build the subframe of the floor. This is what's going to keep the floor nice and rigid, make it feel like a floor instead of a trampoline, and also cover up those ugly edges of the foam that tend to shed beads everywhere. When you're living in a van, it's hard enough to keep the place clean. The last thing you need is a floor that contributes to the mess. After I cut and measured all the pieces, got the right angles on them, I glued, clamped, and then nailed the edges onto the floor piece. All those nails are gonna end up just getting covered with trim anyway, so I didn't feel too bad about letting those nails be seen. After I built the subframe, I needed a couple little supports to go on the inside. The trolleys that held the passenger seats already support the floor pretty well and the foam's fairly high density, but I still wanted to make up some blocks to put strategically kind of through the main unsupported areas of the floor, especially where there was going to be a lot of traffic uh, in and out of the van. One of these spaces was right inside the main door that the owner's gonna use to get in and out. So I put these blocks in, in order to support the floor and eliminate any bounce. Next, I used a very high-tech scribing tool in order to trace the contour of the side of the van onto a piece of cardboard and cut that cardboard to fit the side. This is where the bed is gonna go. I brought it into the van, did a test fit, made a few adjustments, and after a little bit of work, it ended up fitting just perfect. Once that was done, I traced the cardboard onto the plywood, and you'll notice there's some jitter in this line. When I go through with the jigsaw to actually cut it out, I was able to eliminate a lot of that and smooth it out so that it would fit the van really well and still look pretty. Once the curvy edge was totally cut out, I used my skill saw to cut the straight edge of the bed, brought it over to the van for a test fit. It worked great, so I tried it out and took a nap. When I woke up, I took some more measurements, made some high-tech designs for the leading edge bed support, and started drilling holes where the corners of the openings were gonna go. I used a Forstner bit with a backing plate to make sure I didn't get any tear out and cut these nice circular holes where each of the corners was gonna go. These corners are measured to fit a specific size bin that the owner wanted to store her things in under the bed. So instead of doing drawers, we're just gonna slide bins in and out.
After drilling lots of these holes, I cut out the openings where the bins were going to go and finished those cuts with a Japanese handsaw. This is probably an appropriate time in the video to acknowledge the fact that my workbench through the entire project was a wagon full of dirt. Don't hate, it worked out just fine. Once all of those cuts were made, I got out the belt sander to smooth over those edges and to smooth the transitions from where the skill saw met the Forstner bit holes. And then it was pocket hole time. I decided to use pocket holes for most of the joinery in this build because they're super quick and easy, relatively strong for what they need to do, and completely hidden throughout the bulk of the build. I put in four underbed supports, and then my camera got bored and decided to take a nap. Once the bed was together, I brought it over to test fit it in the van, see if everything worked. Turns out it did, and uh, I took another nap. Then it was on to the cabinetry. This is where stuff started to get more exciting and we got to see the build starting to come together. Cutting out some pieces for the back cabinet and then assembling it, holding it together, dry fitting it in the van. And this is the moment where I had a complete brain fart on the whole design of the back cabinet. You can see me trying to work through it. There's that stupid face again. This isn't a still photo, real time, just sitting, thinking. It must have come to me eventually because then I was able to move on and start cutting out other pieces for the cabinet. I traced it onto a large piece of half inch plywood. I use half inch plywood for everything except the bed in order to cut down on weight while still being strong enough to hold clothes, the sink, anything else that is going to be stored on the cabinets. So I scribed a bunch of little measurements into a funky shape, just hoping that it would fit and bingo nailed it. It's always a plus when the door closes. After I got the big pieces cut, I added pocket holes to those as well, and then kind of started dry fitting some of this cabinetry together. I brought it over to the van and test fitted it to see if it would work. I brought that back seat up to see if it would all come together right. And once again, everything looked perfect. So there you have it. The back cabinetry is kind of dry fit in place so that we can visualize what's going on. After the cabinet was in place, I moved on to build a little stage for the refrigerator. It's a top opening fridge, so we wanted to buy a little bit of storage underneath it by adding this plywood stage to hold the fridge up. Once the stage was done, I added a small railing around the outside to kind of retain the fridge, hold it in so that it couldn't slide off, and then I used a really fancy clamping system to hold it in place. I moved on to the countertop next. After tracing the contour of the van door onto the countertop, I traced the bowl that's going to make up the sink and cut out the circle with a jigsaw. I cut out that circle so that it was just a little bit snug in order to hold the sink in with a tension fit so that the sink wouldn't rattle around or make any noise, but would still be easily removable if and when the owner wants to dump water outside. Then I moved on to the water pump. I traced exactly where I wanted the pump to go and then moved over to the shop in order to figure out how exactly I was going to hold the pump in place. I used a hole saw to make this ring that we're going to set the pump in. I used my router to cut a chamfer on the inside of the ring, which would kind of taper it a little bit so that when we put the pump into the ring, we can smush it down and it'll hold it nice and tight there too. No rattling, no worries, that thing's not going anywhere. I put a nice bead of glue on the underside of that retention ring, smeared it around with my finger, and then made sure that it was nice and secure on the countertop using the same fancy clamping system from before. I took all the cabinets to my father-in-law's warehouse where I did all the painting in order to keep them out of the dust. However, I filmed all this on my phone, and I hate painting, so I needed to listen to an audiobook while I did it, so I didn't film any of the painting process. 
However, I did film the mattress cutting process. I traced the bed onto the mattress and then I used an X-Acto knife to cut it out. In hindsight, the X-Acto knife isn't the perfect tool to use for this process because it kind of leaves a bit of a jagged cut, but it fit really well and it's gonna get covered up anyway. So there you have it. The final product after I did final assembly on everything, paint, polyurethane, the water jug is under the sink. The bin is under the bed. There's a couple more where that came from. There's a little bookshelf beside the foot of the bed as well as a deeper storage at the foot of the bed that acts as a pass-through that you can access from the rear of the van. Thank you so much for coming along with me on the build project. I know this was kind of a long video, but I appreciate the interest and wish you all the best in your own van build.